guys, my name is Cassie. I'm a freshman here at Ball State University. I am a first year student in the College of Architecture and Planning as well. I am making this video for incoming freshmen who kind of want to get an idea of what the first year program is like and from there how the program works. Just kind of giving you guys an idea for when you're making your big college decisions in the next like couple months. Um, Ball State is a lot different than you going to LSU and starting studying architecture or going to South Dakota State University and studying architecture or going to Missouri to study urban planning. In those programs, you start day one with your preferred major and then go from there and decide if it's the right field for you or not. But Ball State is completely different. We have this first year program where it's an abstraction year. You learn different techniques of how to draw. You learn different ways of presenting projects, jury style, or just with your peers, um, open gallery style. You learn a little bit about how to make models out of things, like what are good ways to make it look like you 3D printed it, even though with the first year program you can never do any of that, but we'll get into a little bit of that later. Um, so you come in as an undecided major. Um, no matter if you're going into landscape, architecture, architecture, room planning, you have an idea of what you want to do, but this whole first year is to kind of give you an idea of how everything works and how everything fits together. So I was a Farky, which is a fall architecture um, and planning student. And then we have our Sparkies, who are the spring semester architecture and planning students. Um, the fall semester, how we worked is we got here in August and we took our two classes that was either um, architecture 100, landscape architecture 100, or urban planning 100. I had landscape architecture and architecture uh, 100 in the fall, and I am taking urban planning 100 this semester in the spring. But in the fall, you have your DCM class, which is a digital, digital communications and media class, where you do a lot of drawings and learn how to like different techniques of drafting or like shading or stippling, which you'll learn all about this when you get here. You don't need very much experience. We'll get a little bit about me and how I got involved with this program. Um, then you have your studio class. That is one to five. It is a four hour class. It drags on, but it's absolutely amazing. In this class, you learn how to make models. You get different problems and like how to work with those and like make them almost your own little projects a little spin-off of what the problem statement is. Um, studio is divided into five sections. So in one room, there's probably going to be a hundred of you. But it's okay, don't worry about it. It's not one professor. You have a section of 25, 20, depending on the number. And like each section has their own professor. And each professor introduces a new project. So once new like a project is over, a new professor will take over and like introduce the next project and like give lectures throughout that project until the next due date. And then from there, a new professor will take over. So you kind of like work with all the different professors and kind of get a feel for who you could be working with in the future. Um, after fall semester is over, we presented our final model to a jury, which a jury style is where you bring in people from the outside of the studio. And so it's not those five professors that are in front of you just looking at your projects and like giving you a grade. It is like community members. I had a architect from Indianapolis come in and like check out my project and kind of give me feedback on it. I had um, Yorktown representatives for urban planners come in and like check out my project and give me information on that. I just had, I had a variety of people come in and like give me feedback on how things worked. Now I had other kids that were in different sections of mine. They came in and they just did a gallery style. They would put their project up and stand next to their project and wait for a professor or another student to come and be like, hey, like, what's your project about? Like, can you tell me about it? Explain it a little bit better. Like, these kind of things and like give you like little hints and like ideas for like future projects. Go on winter break. Yay, you're done for three weeks. You get back. This is where the um, Sparkies come in. The uh, Sparkies in the fall, I'm sorry, I didn't explain this very well. The Sparkies, you just take general classes. You don't, you do the either landscape architecture 100, architecture 100, urban planning 100 with everybody else, but the rest of your classes are just gen ed classes. You don't have to worry about that one to five studio or that DCM class until in the spring. And in the spring, you have your DCM and your studio class, and then also a couple gen ed classes in there in the mix. But 
fall, going back to our fall studios, kids, I have done four projects a semester, and one of them, we just kind of, they're like, hey, we want you to make a space using abstraction. Like, you take it how you want it. There was a section leader that went with constellations. They looked at stars and how stars are, like, made and created and then did that and, like, repeated it and used repetition and different, like, vocabulary words to, like, make these beautiful structures. And then my section, he used a lot of ribbons, what we called. We just cut a piece of paper to create different, like, abstractions of, like, a building, but without making it look literal. First year, we are not literal at all. Like, this is all just abstraction. Like, we don't care at this point right now if a handicap accessible can get in. We don't care if the doors are three feet block. We don't care... We don't care about any of that right now. We just care about design and abstraction and aesthetics. Um, so that was one of our projects. From there, we moved on to, we also have DCM. And DCM, we did a lot of hand-drawn stuff in there. We're learning a little bit of Photoshop to help with portfolios to submit. In the spring for the Farkies, you guys get to declare your major. Now, we just did this two weeks ago, and I'm terrified because I declared my major as architecture, but I am very confident, and like if you put the work in, like you will most likely get into your program, so I have been told. We will find out in June. So the whole process that works with that is you declare your major on a piece of paper. It's like this big. I want to be an architecture major, and then you submit that. And then you have a portfolio due with a letter of declaration to the office and department chairman um, before May 2nd of this year, and then they will go through all the portfolios for the architecture department, landscape architecture, and urban planning departments, and from there, go and, like, check them out, see who should be where, like, if this is actually a good fit for you or not, or, like, they, like, talk to your professors, like, hey, like, is she a good worker, like, does she deserve to be here, is he a great worker, does he deserve to be here, was he slacking off, did he miss class, like, different questions like that, and professors have a lot of input, and then the first week of June, we will get receive an email with either confirmation or declining. Um, if you get declined, you can reapply to either your second or third choice major or decide that you just want to leave the program in general and go into something else. I have friends that aren't coming back this semester. It, it, I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm telling you this because it happens. We have students come in, they're like super excited, like this is what I want to do. I want to be an architect. I want to be a landscape architecture. Like, I want to do all these things with this program and then find out it's not for them. A lot of my friends had left because they're like, this isn't me. Like, I want to be an art teacher. I want to work with kids where we have to be professionals all the time. You have to be dressed and ready to present to a project to people you don't know. That might tear it apart. But this program prepares you for that. They give you, like, hints and strategies to, like, better explain your project. And if someone comes at you with a question like, hey, like, this doesn't work, like, what were you thinking here? Like, how would this work if you put a different building in, like, space in here? And then you just work with it. You go with it. The first year is about abstraction. Second year, I'm not there yet, so I can't tell you how it's like. I've heard it's the hardest year because you're just, like, getting introductions to it. Um, the other thing about first year is, is you don't need a computer. I have a computer for all my other classes, and I use it in studio sometimes to like do some quick research or something like that. But in first year here, you do get an iPad. It's an iPad mini, and they give you a charger for it, a stylus, and everything for it. You'll take that with you on your field studies. Um, but you don't use computers at all. Um, you use Photoshop a little bit the second semester to work on um, portfolios, but the rest of it is just like you take pictures on cameras and on a flash drive. You put the photos on a flash drive, and you have them for when you're ready to like start portfolios, go down the library and just do it on there. Um, it's all hands. Like I'm a hands-on person, so like this program works for me greatly because I can sit down and like physically do it with my hands instead of sitting in front of a computer all day long, playing on a software, designing it on a software, and having constraints on a software. Where if I'm drawing it on a piece of paper, like I don't have to worry about like not being able to get this edge completely rounded or like get that at a 90 degree angle, I can use my tools 
that we have to use and buy to make those perfect degrees. Um, what I want to talk to you guys about is coming into CAP. I came in with absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I took one art class, and it was my senior year, and it was Intro to 3D Art, so I got a little bit of an idea of how models work. Um, but that's about it. I didn't know how to draw. I couldn't draw a tree. I mean, I could, but it was, like, one of those trees that just had, like, a trunk and, like, big, like, circular, bushy-looking thing on it. Um, I came in, and they got to know us all. They asked us what our prior, like, history was with art classes or, like, what we did in high school. Like, got, they really got to know us really well first. And from there, a lot of professors just graded on how you improved throughout the year. One of my professors was like, Cassie, no offense, I love your work, but you sucked at drawing at the beginning of the year. And I'm like, I know, like, I didn't have any art classes coming in. I, like, had done stuff on computers, but that's basically it. And he's like, but look at this final drawing. Like, look how beautifully, clearly everything is done. Your line weight is perfect. Your different line weights for different parts of the buildings, they, like, match up perfectly. Like, this is literally one of the best drawings I have come from you. And I want you to know that you have improved so much from your very first drawing. He pulled out my first drawing and put it next to my final one, and I was like, whoa, what just happened? Like, I've improved. You can come in with absolutely no idea how to draw, and this program will teach you how to do it. My best friend, she came in with everything under the sun. She knew how to draw. She knew how to draw people. She knew how to draw buildings with detail. She knew how to do make models out of any material where I came in with out of cardboard and wire. And she came in with knowing how to use foam core, knowing how to use um, cardstock, like all these different materials. Like she knew how to do because she took art classes all through high school because she knew she wanted to do this. I came in as in, um, in high school. I was an education major. That was my declared major in high school. And you're like, decide what classes you want to take your junior, senior year. And then my dad and I had a conversation, and he's like, you should really look into engineering classes. And so that's what I did. I went into the engineering classes and worked on CAD and on SketchUp and on SoftPlan. And I used those programs and found a love for architecture and design. And so I took classes my junior and senior year in those. Um, I took a construction systems class where I designed floor plans for a house. And then my senior year, I took building trades and went and built a house that I got lucky enough to build my own house. I made the floor plans my junior year, and they got picked to be designed and built my senior year. So I got to watch all that happen in front of me. And I there's kids that came in with no computer experience. So, like, they come to me, and they're like, hey, like, Cassie, how do you do this? Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, here, this is how it works. Like, I can help them. They help me. Like, it's just one of those things where you don't need any experience to come in and just do it. Like, you don't have to be literate in this program, which... Literacy, you think of as reading and writing. No, architecture has a completely different literacy. We are literate in our hands. We use our hands to create drawings that can be presented to your customers, your directors, your uh, professional um, educators, your employers, and sit down and be able to be like, hey, this is what I came up with. And your drawings should, will speak for themselves. That's being literate in architecture. Also being able to take a model and like put it together in pieces and make it look like you 3D printed it or you put it in the laser printer and cut out all the pieces and then just use tacky glue and glue it all together. You learn all of this, and that's how you become literate in this major. The, second, the third way of literacy in architecture is being able to answer the what then question. This question sucks. You hear this question. Hey, like, I really like the space. Like, what's it used for? Oh, like, it's going to be a barbershop. They're like, but what happens if the barbershop goes out of business and a pet store comes in? How are, like, how is this building going to be able to react to that and adjust to the completely different atmosphere of people and customers and the occupants of the building at night? And, like, you got to be able to explain that. Be like, oh, yeah, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this easily accessible to put in 
like outlets everywhere so that like you can have heating lamps if you have a pet shop in here for the iguanas or like having a bunch of outlets for like the straighteners, the curling irons, like everything that you see in a beauty shop. Like have enough outlets to do that stuff. You could have the space in the back where you can keep storage. Like just be able to explain your drawings and be like, this is what this is for and I can adjust it to make it however I want. Um, that's really being literate in architecture. You don't have to be able to read or write, which you need to be able to read and write. I mean, if you're going into college, you probably do. You've gone through high school. Um, but, like, it's not that you read and write. I've never written a paper. I wrote a paper once this year, and I was for my English 104 class. That is the only paper I've written all year, and I've been here almost an entire year because all I do is draw and make models. I don't have to read books. I don't have to write papers about my projects. I had one research project that was a page. Like, that's, that's easy turnout. And you can do that in an hour. So it's like our literacy is in our hands. We use pencils. We use scissors. We use um, box knives to cut um, cardboard to cardstock, foam core, like all these different things. Like. It's how you interpret your major is what the biggest thing is with this program. I hope that you guys really enjoy what your futures hold. I love, I love this program. I love Ball State. Um, I really feel like I am at home. If you choose to come to Ball State and be an architecture student, I can't wait to meet you in the fall. Um, I'll be on the second floor or not second floor, sorry. I will be on the fifth floor with everybody else. Um, We'll just be moving down one. You guys will be up on the six. If you need anything, please come down and talk to us. Um, I'm always around. I'm usually always in the architecture building if I'm not over in the student center. So please come talk to me. I hope this really helps you guys. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. It's at the bottom of this page under the comments box. Um, have a wonderful night, and we will see you guys in the fall.